So we've talked about precipitation reactions and acid-base neutralization reactions. So the next topic is gas evolution reactions. What happens here is you mix two aqueous solutions and a gas forms. So some of these um, gases form directly from an exchange of ions. So an example here, if you mix potassium sulfide and sulfuric acid, when you swap the ions, you end up with potassium sulfate and hydrogen sulfide, which is a gas and bubbles out. It smells like rotten eggs, really nasty smell. So that gas forms directly. Other gases form because a, um, a product that is unstable forms, and that unstable product decomposes into a gas. So something like sodium hydrogen carbonate with hydrochloric acid, actually any acid. We get an ion exchange here, which generates carbonic acid, but carbonic acid is unstable. And so it quickly decomposes into water and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a gas and that bubbles out. And so this is the sort of reaction that you see when you mix baking soda with acid of any kind. That's where that uh, carbon dioxide comes from. So here we have picture and illustration. Um, aqueous sodium hydrogen carbonate and HCl. And what we see is um, bubbles forming. So it looks a little bit like, you know, Sprite or Sierra Mist or something, or tonic water. Um, and those all have the same bubbles as this solution does. So the sodium um, and the chloride just remain out there. The hydrogen carbonate um, combines with the hydrogen ion, uh, hydronium ion, to make um, carbonic acid. The carbonic acid decomposes, and the result is that we get carbon dioxide. It's a gas, and it, so it forms bubbles and, and bubbles out. Any questions? So in Chem 1A, we're responsible for knowing um, four different gas evolution reactions. Um, the first one is one you just have to memorize. So if you see um, H2S as one of your products, we just have to remember that that's a gas. So an example here, hydrochloric acid and potassium sulfide. We're just predicting products by swapping ions, right? Same thing we did on Monday. When we swap the ions, we end up with H2S and we need to remember it's a gas. The other three, um, are kind of neat. Um, so if we end up with an intermediate product of H2CO3, that's carbonic acid, and that can come from several different reactions, uh, reactant types, um, mostly including carbonates and bicarbonates. And if we see H2CO3, we need to recognize that de that decomposes into CO2. Um, H2SO3 decomposes into SO2, and ammonium hydroxide decomposes into ammonia. But there's something common to all three of these decomposition reactions. They all decompose into water and a gas. So if we take H2CO3, and it's unstable, so we have to remember that, it decomposes into water, H2O, and then the gas is what's left of that molecule after you remove water. So if I take off two hydrogens for the water and one of the oxygens, what I have left is CO2. And we should recognize carbon dioxide as a gas. Very similar thing happens with sulfurous acid, H2SO3. Again, it's unstable, decomposes to form water and, and we can remember what, or we can predict what the other gas is by just taking the 
H2O out of that product and we get SO2. SO2, like CO2, is a gas. Also does not smell good. Most sulfur compounds don't smell good. Rotten eggs, kind of a sewage smell, those are all the uh, sulfur compounds. Ammonium hydroxide looks like a very different thing from those two acids, but it also decomposes into water and something. And again, we can predict what the something is by getting rid of the oxygen for the water, and we need to get rid of two hydrogens that go to the water, and what we've got left is ammonia. And ammonia is a gas. So those are the four types of gas evolution reactions. Now, unlike stoichiometry, unit conversions, things like that, this is not a big deal. Okay, so try to remember this stuff, but if you can't, don't worry too much about it. Yeah. So there's three here, plus the H2S. Yeah, that one's a little different. It just forms directly. Any other questions? Write a molecular equation for the gas evolution reaction that occurs when you mix aqueous hydrobromic acid and aqueous potassium sulfite. Now, here, the question or the statement, the command, it's not really a question, is it? Um, tells us that it's a gas evolution reaction, and so that should help us out. We're looking for something unstable to form a gas. Um, so we need the formulas for our reactants. Hydrobromic acid, quick review. The prefix hydro tells me there's no oxygen in this acid. It's a binary acid. So it's just hydrogen and bromine. So that's HBr. And I'm told that's at, um, aqueous. Um, potassium sulfite. Potassium is K plus. Sulfate is SO4. This is the light version, so it's SO3, 2 minus. And then based on the charges, I need two potassiums and one sulfite. That's also aqueous. Then the products. I get by looking at the ions from my two reactants and swapping partners, right? So hydrogen and bromine came to this party together, but they're just friends. And potassium and sulfite came, but they're just friends. And so we're going to see if there's any chemistry between potassium and bromide or between hydrogen and sulfite. And so I'm just going to pair them up over here put K plus and Br minus, and so those are just gonna go together. And then I've got H plus and SO3, two minus. So the charges tell me that I need H2, SO3. Now, is KBr soluble or insoluble? It's soluble. Potassium compounds are always soluble. This is an acid, right? So we can definitely assume that that's soluble. Are we done? No, we didn't make a gas yet, right? And we also didn't balance the equation. Let's balance it first. Um, here I've got two potassiums and here I only have one. So I need a two over here. So my potassiums are good. And then I have two bromines and over here I only have one. So I we'll put a two there. And that gives me two hydrogens and a sulfite and two hydrogens and a sulfite. So this is where I need to remember that H2SO3 is unstable. And it's going to decompose into water and what's left. 
right? So this is going to decompose into H2O, which would be a liquid. And when I remove the two hydrogens and one of the oxygens, I have SO2. And that's my gas. Mm -hmm. It, I know that it decomposes because it says in the table that it does. Yeah, because I told you so. Yeah, it's just um, H2SO3, H2CO3, and NH4OH. Those are the three that decompose, and then there's H2S that's just a gas. So we just have to remember them. Okay, so I've got my products here, but this is a bit of a mess, right? So... Um, like if you were putting this into um, an answer in Master in Chemistry, they'd want you to stick it all together. So let's fix it up down here. 2HBr aqueous plus K2SO3 aqueous is going to make, we still have the 2KBr and then what the H2SO3 decomposed into. H2O liquid and SO2 gas. And there's our molecular equation. Any questions? Where did the water come from? Excellent question. So we made H2SO3, and then we just have to remember that this decomposes. So this decomposed and fell apart into H2O and SO3. So if you take the H2SO, H2O and the SO2 and combine those atoms together, you can make H2SO3. Maybe a picture would be good. I know, it's like, why, right? Like, really? So that's sort of how the atoms are connected in H2SO3. And what happens is um, an oxygen and two hydrogens leave and an SO2 leaves. So it breaks apart. And you might be wondering why. We don't have time today to answer that. And off the top of my head, I don't know why anyway, but it's, it's just not stable. Kind of like, you know, why do some marriages break up? It's complicated, right? So you could think of this as like, I don't know, some organization, because it's a little too many people for a marriage, but um, some organization that, that split into two companies or something. Any other questions?